Hi guys, I'm Ryan Houston and welcome to my Fly Tying channel. If your video is about to start shortly, please take this opportunity to hit the like button down below, leave some comments, tell your friends. Interaction, likes, subscriptions help my channel to grow and help me to keep producing content for yourselves. If you're new to my channel, check out the other videos that I've got. There are over 500 videos at this stage, so there should be something there for everybody. Again, video is about to start. Hit that like button down below. Hi guys, uh, so what we're going to do today is to scale down the fire tiger uh, with a view to it being a perch fly for a big perch. So I'm going to use a 10 uh, Sakuma 470 here, which is a short shank, uh, sharp and strong hook because where there are perch, they're quite likely pike. So just in case something a bit bigger takes hold. Um, so, short shank hook here, there's probably what one and a half centimeters or so to tie on and we're aiming for a fly here in that sort of four inch kind of range, three to four inches. So I'm going to use the gel spun again because we might encounter something with teeth. And just uh, glue the thread onto the shank. So, for uh, the tail of this fly, what I'm going to use is a mixture of silver Lure Flash Mobile and I'm going to use uh, some Mirage Pearl here. So I'm going to take, say, three or four strands of Mirage. So this is probably what, 12 to 14 inches long, all in all, so we're going to double that over. And then cut off at the bend. And then again, I'm going to partly double this over on itself. And cut it off. And that'll, when we apply those, the short bunch to the middle of the long bunch, we're going to end up with a slightly tapered bunch. So. I'm going to tie this on roughly three quarters of the way along its length and fold the short ends back on itself. So this way we're trying to achieve a sort of like a, a teardrop shape in the end of the whole thing. So put that on. Uh, so next what we're going to do is to take the Lure Flash Mobile. So this is our silver. So this is like a crinkly supported fiber I suppose this because I think it has it has like another fiber around it. If we take I don't know half a dozen or so strands of that, maybe a few more, and do the same with this a shorter bunch. So if we fold that one over once it should do it. And then again we're gonna do the same thing with it. Take it out to the tip of our tail. Splay it around the shank, a loose wrap, tighten into that, and then fold the short ends back and tie a bit of a dam up to them. Just to make sure all stays where it is, I'm just going to put a little dab of super glue into that. So we already have that little bait fish idea or profile so it's now about the blinging it up. So in the bigger flies you've seen me use bucktail to support the fly and this one what we're going to do is use a cock hackle and we're going to wind it. So I'm using a fluorescent chartreuse hackle here. And we're going to wrap that on just to create a little bit of a supporting sort of internal umbrella to the fly. So it's going to take the thread back to it there because what I'm going to do is take a turn in front of the thread and a turn behind the thread and a turn in front of the thread and a turn behind the thread and that way the thread is sort of overlapping the turns of hackle as we go and it provides a little bit more support to the fly as we go along. So we just 
wind back into that and as you can see we now have this little bit of a general support. So uh, the the mix that I use for the uh, for the fire taggers on the larger style flies is a slightly heavier typed uh, flash so this will be one and two mil flash so it might get a little bit uh, stumpy if we used it on its own for this so I'm going to cut this down short and it's going to create the sort of two-thirds length of the of the profile so it's there for color and a little bit uh, well there'll be, there'll be some movement out of it, but not as much if, as if we used it for the full length so that's why we have this sort of more mobile lighter type material back here to give us the uh, movement in the end of the tail so we wind back into that glue our thread and wind back onto it okay so then we're going to move to our connect on so uh, I have a, a neon yellow typed connect on here so as we can see um, and we're not going to use a huge pile of this so we just need to misalign the bunches so as we don't have straight ends tie that on across its middle roughly some of this might be a little bit long so I'm just going to cut a random sort of taper into it and then fold it back tie across that and that gives us the neon green body that's associated with our fire tigers. So now I'm going to take a little grizzle neck that has been dyed in a fluorescent chartreuse. I'm going to take a feather from each side of my cape and we're going to set these on sort of the sides, sides to the upper sort of part of the the fly, if that makes sense. And we're going to put one on each side, hopefully match this up roughly for length. And that'll give us a nice sort of tiger striping in that uh, chartreuse green colour. glue the thread and over wrap that to make sure it binds together so as you can see we have a fly we're aiming for a fly that's roughly the length of my finger here so on a lot of the flies you'll have seen me use craft fur you can use craft fur uh, but what I'm going to do here is use uh, arctic fox and part of the reason I'm doing that is because it's very mobile so just to try and get a little bit of mo movement at these sizes so I'm going to take some black and I'm going to pull out the very shortest fur out of this and then I'm just going to start pulling the bunch apart and layering it back on top of itself and that way I'm going to end up getting rid of my straight cut end I'm going to turn it around and lay it on about what a third of its length pointing backwards and then we're going to repeat the same underneath but this time with a hot orange fox so this is fox mask but if you don't have fox mask use body hair or whatever you have or tail and the same thing grab it about halfway along its length pull out all the short stuff misalign it slightly and then we're going to flip the fly over and get that on 
underneath. Allow the two bunches to meet up here 50-50 and tie that down. And then I'm gonna put a hitch in behind that or two. take our straw, fold it all back, once it's back I'm going to stroke it into position and when I'm happy with it now I'm holding it back under tension here when I'm happy with it I'm just going to glue all the way around it. That's just seeping into the first sort of few mil of the head there. Then I'll put on the big straw and squeeze it. And that's going to give me a flat head profile which is going to be important when it comes to trying to put our eyes onto these things. So hold it, you should feel it start to heat up a little bit and then we can take that off. So, if you want to change the profile, you can always lift these up a little bit before the glue totally dries on them, and that'll give you a bit more height to the head of it. But I'm trying not to end up with too much down here, because we're, because we're using a smaller hook, I don't want to interfere too much with the gape. So I'm trying to keep it flatter underneath. So, as you can see, we have a nice, attractive little bait fish. All that remains now is to put eyes onto the fly. So uh, we're going to use one as per usual that has been made earlier. So it's over here. And the super glue at this stage has dried off a bit on it. So we're going to use our uh, two part five minute epoxy on this. If we want, we can uh, we can do different colours of uh, glitter into the epoxy. So I'm going to use a black glitter. So I'm going to use a black glitter for this, so I'm going to take a little bit of that and put it out onto a little post-it pad that I have down below here. And then we're going to use our two part 5 minute epoxy. Squirt it a little bit to there. We'll mix the whole thing up then with a cocktail stick and the glitter actually I find helps to uh, let you know whenever the epoxy is very well mixed because then the, the glitter will be evenly distributed throughout it. So mix it round and round and round. And then we take a blob of our glitter and I'm going to set it up so it creates like a flat bit on the side here go to the other side again a bit of a blob created 
and then allow it to create a continuation of the bleb the whole way around the head. Next we're going to take our eyes, so I'm going to use these, these are 3mm uh, silvers, I'll always use whatever catches your fancy as with regards an eye. I'll set that up on the side and the same on the far side, might be easier to do with tweezers, we'll find out. I like to stick the back edge of the eye into the the epoxy. I think it helps to stop them from falling off. There's just a little lip over it and then that's our fly tight so we just need to let that uh, dry but if we just sit here it'll sag so we're either going to have to re revolve it uh, in your face or in your hands or something that's why I use the five minute one because it's fairly quick to do that uh, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into one of these rotary fly dryers here and leave it to run. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and that it has give you some ideas. Um, if you did, hit the like button, subscribe, check out the other videos on the channel, tell your friends, and until next time, tight lines, and thanks for watching.